Countries within a region are likely to hold similar style economies. This can be due to ideological influence or simply due to the large abundance of a certain kind of regional resource. We'll explain right here with this map. Countries in blue, such as the United States, China, Western Europe, East Asia, and North America are all developed industrialized economies who export items such as machines, cars, electronics, and capital goods. Countries in brown, such as Russia, Central Asia, the Middle East and North Africa, Central Africa, and Venezuela are all energy dependent nations who export oil, natural gas, and other energy products. Where countries in red kind of do a mix of everything. Their exports range anywhere from oil to food products to clothing to opium and so on. But let's focus on the green area of the Caribbean. Countries in this region do have a quote unquote diverse economy, but a slight majority of their exports are either food products such as sugar and fruit or energy products such as oil. And then there's Barbados, that little red dot in the bottom right hand corner, where hard liquor is their top export. Hey! Hey! Yeah, boy! Oh, yeah! Hey, I'm here to party! Hey, hey. What you drinking? Goat milk! Mm -mm. Barbados is often referred to as the Rum Islands due to its highly praised liquor and alcoholic products, with its top major importer of alcohol being that of the United States of America. But other than the U.S. buying boatloads of beer and rum from the Caribbean island, how exactly do these two countries get along on the world stage? We'll go over that in today's video of the U.S. Relations series, in which we'll go over the relationship between the United States of America and the Caribbean country of Barbados. The first English settlement in South Carolina was created after the English arrived with three boatloads of emigrants from Barbados, with a good percentage of them being slave laborers. The English and the Barbadians continued to build up ports and towns along the coast of South Carolina. Roughly 80 years later, future U.S. President George Washington traveled to Barbados in order to help his brother heal from tuberculosis and stayed at what is now known as the George Washington House. Over the course of the next 200 years, Barbados was still under British rule and was used as a frequent stopping point for ships and trade routes. Once the Cold War began, the United States began to use Barbados for other things other than just trade routes. There is some evidence that shows that the United States worked on chemical weapons trades and research within the Caribbean island between 1956 and 1978. Hey US and Barbados, I need you guys to sign this chemical weapons treaty here. Barbados eventually gained independence from the United Kingdom in 1966, and the United States immediately established relations. Even with having relations for 54 years, there isn't much public interaction between the two, mainly because it isn't needed. A major reason is because there's no regional conflicts. Barbados is a neutral, friendly country, and the Caribbean country also has a very small population, which requires less attention and interaction. When there is, however, major state-to-state -state interactions, it usually revolves around that of counter-narcotics operations. Barbados is sometimes used as a hub for international drug cartels as a means to expand into the United States and other Caribbean countries. The two countries have signed a mutual legal assistance treaty, which allows the U.S. to perform counter-narcotics operations while also enforcing maritime law. The United States is Barbados' largest import and export partner, with the U.S. mainly purchasing hard liquor, as mentioned before at the beginning of this video. Even with liquor being Barbados' top export, tourism indirectly makes up over 40% of the country's GDP, with a majority of tourists coming from, no surprise, the United States. As of the making for this video, the two countries have had relations for 54 years, and the two have embassies within each other's capital cities. With the U.S. being the primary source of economic growth and security within Barbados, and some pretty secretive WMD research throughout the Cold War, it's pretty fair to say that these two countries are on good terms with one another, and it's likely to stay like this in the near future. Thank you guys for watching today's video of the U.S. Relations Series. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video. Also be sure to turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss an upload. In the next video of the U.S. Relations Series, we'll be filming in a very different location than where we normally do. So please make sure to stay tuned and see where that is.
See you guys soon.